Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, and I thought today we would discuss how much information should you rely on when a customer is telling you that it's, it, it, it hasn't been run in a couple months, or they think it's this, or they think it's that. How much do you believe? You have to be like a doctor and a doctor looks at what are the issues and what could be the underlying cause of it. Now I've had customers come in and tell me that they ran it earlier this spring and now it won't run. And you can smell the varnish gas in it to know that that gas has been in that thing for a long long time and it hasn't run in years. You can only take customers' information to a certain extent, but you have to do everything, whether you listen to a customer or the customer just drops it off. It's the same way to take do an intake on it, and that is you bring it in, dump the fuel, check compression, check for fire, put clean fuel in it, and then go from there. Now, if it's got low compression, most of the stuff that's out there these days for your handhelds and all that stuff, it's not worth fixing. By the time you buy the parts and the labor that goes into it, that customer is gonna be farther ahead to go buy a brand new one. And you're going to get different customers that have different levels of experience. The, the worst ones are the what I call the togglers. And that is they know just enough to get themselves into trouble. And the worst case scenario that you end up with is when somebody brings you a box of parts and says, can you fix it? I know my mechanics hate it if somebody's already been into it because they don't know if there's something missing that should be in the box whereas if we got it before the toggler got to toggling and with it we could tear it apart and and know what is missing and and what parts go where you know on different equipment instead of going and looking up parts diagrams to see how they go together Most of my customers, and this is a trust building relationship, that my customers trust my take on what needs to be done. You know, 99% of the time, it's just do it, Eric, I trust you. You've always treated me fair in the past, just get it done. Or I appreciate you telling me that, that it's not worth fixing, and what do I owe you? And usually when it's something like that, it's nothing, you know, because it's something I found right off. Like if it's low compression and a weed eater, I found that right off, didn't take much of my time, and now the customer can go buy a brand new one. And the bulk of the time, they ask if, if we could use it for parts. And that's how we end up, you know, about every three to four years, the yard is totally full of mowers and weed eaters and everything else because they've either opted not to want to put that kind of money into the machine or abandon it, you know. But what I'm not saying is to not listen to your customers because I want you to listen to your customers. Even though most of the stuff that they tell you, you're going to rule it out for yourself but by not listening because customers will pick up in a heartbeat if you're not really listening to them and that can be taken in numerous different ways and most times it's not good it's you don't value them enough to listen to what they have to say 
hear them out. Make sure that you let them know that you heard them by repeating back. Okay, so this is what it's doing, and and this is where you thought it might be, and we'll we'll check it. You've already made to that customer the point that you did hear them and that you do value what they have to say. What I'm saying is you stop at that point after the customer leaves and you have a intake that's the same no matter whether it's a customer dropping it off and saying call me when it's done to a customer trying to tell you what they think is wrong with it. It's the same rule and that rule is once the customer leaves, dump the fuel, check the compression, make sure it's got good fire. If all three of those are present, it should run. You know, even if you got a bad carburetor, it should still run. Hit it with some, you know, carburetor cleaner, not starting fluid, carburetor cleaner, and it should fire up. In your shop, you need to have your set of rules of how you're going to do an intake on each piece of equipment and have it as simplified as possible. You don't need to have all this gadgetry to, to tell you if it's a yay or a nay of something that you can fix. But the point I'm trying to make with this video is you can't trust what the customer tells you as being the issue. You have to rule it out yourself. But you also have to make sure that the customer feels like you heard them and you're not talking back down to them like they don't know what the hell they're talking about. You're never rude to a customer. That customer brought it to you because they trust you right and if they're a new customer this is a good way to show them that they can trust you by being honest good listening skills you know getting the work done and the shortest amount of time possible without skimping on anything and giving them back something that they can use it's running now you solved their problem or letting them know okay this is what we're looking at to cost the fix and if it were my machine this is what I would do when I do that judgment call I don't always do what's best for the shop <laughs> I can tell you that much right now and what do I mean by that I mean that if I were doing what was best for the shop I would try to convince the customer right to put the extra money into it but I've always run the shop of if if I'm not willing to do it for my machine, then I won't do it to somebody else's and without having them tell me to proceed. Honestly, I try to talk people out of getting themselves in a, a deeper hole than what they already are on a unit. And that has worked for us. Just straight up honesty. All right, so thanks for watching, and if you think we add value to what you're watching, if you could like and subscribe and also share with your friends. So on that, listen to your customers, but have your steps set up in the shop of how you're going to do every piece of equipment when it comes through that door.